Hey there guys, welcome back for another Warhammer Imperium painting video. So this week's magazine, we didn't get any uh, models, it was just paint and you can find the review for that up in the corner there. And so as always, I will be showing you how to paint a Space Marine and this time it is a Salamander's Assault Intercessor. So if you haven't yet checked out the video review for this week's magazine, you can find that in the corner there. And if you wanna see how I paint this guy, Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. So first of all, I've gone ahead and primed the model with a white primer. And now I'm just applying some wah flesh all over the model. Just uh, getting it on there, keeping it fairly thin. And this will take probably two, maybe three coats. And I'm just using a basic Games Workshop uh, basing brush for this. But yeah, just get it all over the model. And we'll be back for the next step. So now that I've got a nice even coat of wire flesh on there, I'm just using the medium uh, dry brush from uh, the Army Painter. And I've got some textured paper here that I'm using. You can use some paper towel or anything and just removing the majority of the paint off the bristles. Now I'm leaving some on there. This isn't quite a dry brush. Um, there's a little bit more paint on there than you would leave if you were do doing a dry brush. But all I'm looking to do is, for the most part, just coming down in a downward stroke and trying to get all of the exposed armor. Um, so basically everything except under his arms and between his legs. Um, the idea here is to build this up to a nice opaque green and leaving some of that wire flesh in the shadow areas. So with that brighter green on there, I'm now taking a flat brush and starting to work on some of the highlights. So I'm using a two to one um, mix of Warpstone Glow and Moot Green. So that's two parts Warpstone Glow and one part Moot Green. And I'm now just coming again in a downward stroke, but trying to a little bit more, uh, be a little bit more picky with it. I'm wanting to catch those flat areas and the, um, the hard edges. And again, I'm trying to leave a little bit of gradient between the previous color and the... Um, the highlight color that we're now applying and again you can see that i'm removing the majority of it on the uh, textured paper here you can do it on a paper towel or whatever but the idea now is that we're working towards getting that brighter green that the salamanders are known for okay so once that's done i just want to add some shading into the recesses and sort of tie in the uh, the dry brush gradients and for that I'm just using some Athonian camo shade it's a green wash so it sits in nicely in the recesses and it's not going to tint that brighter green too much um, it's just going to sort of blend the colors together a little bit so obviously I'm going to apply this get it all over the model get it to sit in those recesses and then I'll let it dry for about 15 to 20 minutes and then move on to the next step Okay, so this next step is a complete experiment, but I thought I would do it to show you guys what can be done. So what I'm doing here is trying to get a little bit more of a brighter green or an orange, you know, a sort of more yellowish green in here. And so I'm using uh, Yandan contrast paint, uh, Yandan yellow. And I'm applying this very thinly. I'm not applying it like I would with a contrast paint. This is more as a glaze. And the idea, as you can see, it's brightening up that green and uh, just leaving a little bit of um, sort of an orangey tone in the shadows a little bit. I'll then leave this to dry and go back over again with the Athonian camo shade. That will take it back down to a green um, and take away some of that yellow and also change the, those orangey shadow areas back into a, a green shadow area. Obviously this is a step you can 
completely leave out it was just purely experimental on my part but I thought I would do it with this and uh, see how it comes out okay so you can see here the Yandan yellow um, has brightened up that green quite a bit and I'm now taking some moot green and using a fine brush I think this is a number one I'm just going around all those edges and giving it a nice bright highlight um, a lot more games workshop style uh, they tend to have these quite sort of thick bright edge highlights with a slightly thinner highlight inside them and I thought uh, let's go for that with this salamander so all those edges are going to get a, uh, a nice bright line along along them so next up I'll take some Abaddon black and I'm going to apply this obviously to all the areas I want black so that's going to be the whole of the chain sword except for the handle all of the bolt gun his shoulder pauldrons will also have a nice coat of uh, black on there as well as his belt, the soles and bottom trim of his boots, um, any sort of interior, or interior, sorry, any inside um, Under Armour, that's the one I'm trying to think of, so yeah, any Under Armour, and also the exhaust ports on his, um, his backpack, so the two little square ones, or the four little square ones that you get at the bottom, as well as the round ones on the top but I do leave the top portion of them in green it is just the vent part um, and sort of the ball shape of that that I'll do in black so next up I'll take some Retributor armor and just use this for a couple of gold pieces um, it's just the cross type piece on his forearm and also his uh, chest piece here the Aquila on his chest and again a couple of thin coats is all you need for this and then just a nice quick wash of Agrax earth shade there's not too much detail on here so um, I do keep it just just the retributor armor and then a thin wash of Agrax and that's more than enough to add some shadow into that gold so next up I take some Mournfang Brown and I'm going to use this just to paint some nice quick easy leather on all of the pouches. So it's the pistol pouch that I've painted the bottom part black and also he has a little pouch just behind his uh, his chainsaw handle and the little one on the, the back of his belt. And obviously I'll give these a couple of thin down coats because it's important to get those thin down coats and then move on to the next step okay so next up keeping this very games workshop style of painting I'm just using some scrag brown and giving the um, the pouches uh, edge highlight all the way down and around them and then across the uh, the pistol pouch I'll just do a couple of thin lines just to look a little bit like a sort of a bit of the weathering You'll notice the sword here I haven't painted completely black. I was going to paint it yellow um, for hazard stripes but it doesn't quite work out so I end up doing the whole thing black and painting the yellow on top which is what I suggest you guys do. It's a lot easier than trying to leave the gap uh, which you'll notice I have two white lines on there but I'll end up with three yellow stripes. So moving on to the pistol now I'm just using some Mephiston Red and again in the classic GW style I'm just giving this a nice couple of thin coats all down the um, sort of the top muzzle part or the, the top part of the bolt gun leaving the grip and the, uh, the barrel and sort of that back exchange part in uh, black and then I'll go over that with some silver later but for now just get some nice even coats of Mephiston Red down. So, working on the uh, hazard stripes now, I'm taking some Avaland Sunset and I'm just going to mark out my middle stripe. I like to have 
three yellow stripes on my swords. I think that they work out or it spaces out just right to uh, have four black and three yellow. So what I like to do with the chain swords is try and get the yellow markings to be three teeth wide, if you look at the teeth on the chain sword, and to shift over one teeth, uh, one tooth. And what I mean by this, if you start on one tooth and you go up at an angle, the top of your um, your angled line, if you were to draw a line straight down from it, will be just after the, or just on line with the second tooth. So that your third tooth, where you start, if you were to draw a line from the top point of it straight down, it would go across the black and over the fourth tooth. So there are three wide at the bottom and three wide at the top, but it's at an angle of one tooth across. Um, I hope that is clear enough. But yeah, it gives a perfect balance of um, stripes to, you know, black stripes to yellow stripes. They all come out nice and even, um, at least for the most part. You can build up, now the reason I use Avalon Sunset is you can build the yellow up nicely. Avalon is a base paint, so it covers black much better. And you can also use the black to make any tidy ups if you go a little bit too wide or anything like that. So yeah, much better to do black over a uh, yellow over black than it is to do black over white and leave the gaps to fill in. Do it this way, much more accurate. And then for along the top of the uh, blade, I just come directly across it, it's not at an angle. And then when going back down the other side, obviously you come back one tooth and uh, yeah, you should end up with a perfect uh, stripe pattern on your chainsaws. Right, so next I'm going to apply some lead belcher to my metallic areas. So that's the um, sort of the exhaust vent part of the chainsaw. Obviously the teeth of the chainsaw and this little uh, bolt piece that, right at the, uh, the end there. I'll also do the vents on the backpack, both the four at the bottom, the four square ones and just on the inside of the two round ones at the top, just where it's got that corrugated look to it, the, the little lines. Um, for the bolt gun, I will paint everything that isn't red or the front hand grip. Everything else will be done in lead belcher and then also the pommel of the, uh, the chainsaw. Alright, so I'm now taking some Flash Gits Yellow and just giving a nice edge highlight along that Avalon Sunset. Um, I like the slightly darker yellow of the Avalon and then using this as a nice edge highlight. So obviously I'll do the bottom edge, the top two on one side as you get that slight bevel and then the same on the other side. Okay, so moving back to the bolt gun now. Um, I know I'm a little back, backwards and forwards, but hopefully you guys uh, can follow along. But I'm just taking some Evil Suns Scarlet and again, edge highlighting all around those edges uh, for a nice quick edge highlight. I'll also uh, apply this into his eye lenses for some nice red eye lenses with a small, very small dot of the flash kits yellow in the back edge of uh, each lens for a little bit of a highlight there. Okay, so here I am applying some of the Agrax Earthshade over the, um, the gold here. And again, like I said, I'm just keeping it thin just to get a little bit of shading on there and uh, you know, that works nice for small areas of gold. I don't bother adding a highlight of metallic back in on uh, small areas like that. I'm now just running it down the sides. Again, a bit more like a glaze, just to um, darken up some of the, uh, the bolt gun there. And then the same again here with the pouch. I'm just using it just to blend in the colors. You can see how I'm applying a little bit more with the pouch. Um, just to get some shading on there in the uh, the recess and the dips 
and yeah again leave that for about 10 minutes to dry and then finally I'm just taking some Mechanicus standard grey and running an edge highlight or a sort of edge highlight right down the pauldron um, along that sort of that top curve down to the bottom corner and then along the horizontal curve again just to that corner but not quite meeting the other grey line I leave some dark shadow in that corner I'll then do this on the back of any of the under armour that you can see like on the back of the knees and such as well as along the um, the black pop portions of the chainsaw. So just as I did with the yellow, I'll do the same with the Mechanicus Standard Grey here. And there we have it, one tabletop ready assault intercessor for the salamanders. Obviously I've gone ahead and put on a transfer there for his chapter and finished off the base. Not very salamandy I know but it's just a quick base for uh, just to show you guys the main paint job. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you have enjoyed it make sure you hit that thumbs up button and if you haven't yet subscribed hit that subscribe button. I am desperately trying to grow this channel so every subscriber is a godsend thank you to all of you who have recently subscribed your support means a lot um, and obviously welcome to the inner circle so if you've not yet subscribed hit that subscribe button if you have recently subscribed welcome and if you haven't yet checked out the review video for this week's issue then check that out in the, uh, the top corner Otherwise, until next time guys, as always, take it easy and keep painting those minis.